Welcome to Catholic News World. Welcome to Catholic News World. Please subscribe to our channel. My name is Steph. Here are this week's breaking news headlines. Three nuns and a seminarian were kidnapped along with their driver in Imo State, southern Nigeria, Africa. According to a memo from their congregation, the nuns belong to the missionary daughters of Mater Ecclesi, a religious institute in the Diocese of Abakaliki, Aboni State, while the seminarian belongs to the missionary sons of the Most Holy Trinity. The five were captured on October 5, along the road to Mbano on their way to the funeral of the mother of one of the nuns. When reached via telephone by Fides Agency, the missionary daughters of Mater Ecclesi said they currently have no further information about their sisters and the other abducted people. They ask everyone to join in prayer for their safe release. The abducted nuns include Sister Rosemary Ejiawokir Ojowimu, Sister Maria Ngozi Okoye, Sister Josephine Mary Chinyekwo, Seminarian Peter Iakino Sunday, and Mr. Awoke Emmanuel. The kidnappers have contacted the leadership of the religious order in Nigeria, demanding a ransom for their release. In response to the continued tensions and violence that erupted into warfare between Gaza and Israel Catholic bishops from around the world have called for prayer and fasting for peace. Bishop David Malloy, chairman of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, USCCB, Committee on International Justice and Peace, said. On October 7, the Feast of the Most Holy Rosary, the world watched the operation launched from Gaza and the rapid call to arms from Israel that ensued. Almost 50 years to the day of the launch of the 1973 Arab-Israeli War, once again war is spilling out in the Holy Land. With it brings the mounting casualties and hostilities unfolding on all sides, and increased threats to the status quo of the holy places among Jews, Muslims, and Christians further dimming any hope for peace. The world is once again shocked and horrified by the outbreak of ferocious violence in the Holy Land. Reports have surfaced indicating large numbers of wounded and dead, including many civilians. I join with Pope Francis in his call for peace and his condemnation of this widespread outbreak of violence. As he stated in his Sunday audience, may the attacks and weaponry cease. Please. And let it be understood that terrorism and war do not lead to any resolutions, but only to the death and suffering of so many innocent people. May all who love the Holy Land seek to bring about among all the parties engaged in the fighting a cessation of violence, respect for civilian populations, and the release of hostages. As we pray urgently for peace, we recall especially all the families and individuals suffering from these events. We call on the faithful and all people of goodwill to not grow weary and to continue to pray for peace in the land our Lord, the Prince of Peace, called home. At the Vatican Synod, Margaret Karam spoke, she is the president of the Focolari movement, and an Arab Catholic, of Israeli and Palestinian origin. She told journalists that the prayer of supplication on Thursday morning at the Synod was a very strong moment, because ever since the war broke out, my heart has been broken and I wondered what I was doing here at the Synod. Joining in prayer with everyone was a very profound moment. According to Margaret Karam, many efforts are needed for peace, but, the power of prayer is crucial. This experience is teaching me what it means to walk together, to dialogue, to let oneself be challenged by others, and synodality is not just a methodology, it must become a way of life of the church, listening to the other with respect, beyond different opinions, she said. She then cited the many initiatives of interreligious prayer of recent days, including on digital platforms, in order to involve as many faithful around the world. We agreed to meet at the same time to pray together through the Living Peace Initiative, and we also asked for concrete gestures of solidarity towards brothers of other religions together with the commitment to sign an appeal for peace to be addressed to world leaders. Good deeds do not make noise, people talk only about hatred, but Margaret Karam is keen to point out that in Israel many are concerned about building bridges with those living in Gaza. I have a Jewish friend, she confided, who decided to pray at the same time as Muslims to be united with them in prayer. Prompted by questions from the press, the president of the Focolari movement called for concerted action by the international community so that negotiations might be resumed and the urgency of resolving this conflict might be felt. There is still too much silence. My voice alone will not bear fruit, everyone's commitment is needed to promote respect for human rights and reconciliation between peoples. 
the Hamas surprise attack left 1,300 dead in Israel and at least 1,900 people have been killed by Israel in retaliation strikes aimed at Gaza. Several thousand are injured on both sides of the border. After his Wednesday general audience catechesis on October 11, 2023, the Pope made an appeal. Pope Francis said, I continue to follow what is happening in Israel and Palestine with tears and apprehension, many people killed, others injured. I pray for those families who have seen a feast day transformed into a day of mourning, and I ask that the hostages be released immediately. It is the right of those who are attacked to defend themselves, but I am very concerned about the total siege under which the Palestinians are living in Gaza, where there have also been many innocent victims. Terrorism and extremism do not help reach a solution to the conflict between Israelis and Palestinians, but fuel hatred, violence, revenge, and only cause each to other suffer. The Middle East does not need war, but peace, a peace built on dialogue and the courage of fraternity. The Vatican's Secretary of State Cardinal Pietro Parolin offered the possibility of mediation between Israel and Hamas and also called for prayer for peace. He said, the Holy See is ready for any necessary mediation, as always. It seems to me that the greatest possible justice in the Holy Land is the two-state solution, which would allow Palestinians and Israelis to live side by side in peace and security, meeting the aspirations of the majority. This solution, which is supported by the international community, has recently seemed to some, on both sides, to be no longer feasible. For others, it never was. The Holy See is convinced of the opposite and continues to support it. Pope Francis called a priest from Gaza twice in concern for the safety of the Christians living along the Gaza Strip. Parish priest Father Gabriel Romanelli told Vatican News about two phone calls he has received from the Pope since Saturday. The Gaza Catholic Parish is home to around 150 people who have lost their homes or are seeking a safe place from the bombardments, said the Italian-born priest. Catholic Patriarchs of the Middle East invite for prayer and call for implementation of the international resolutions of the United Nations. The Catholic Patriarchs of the Middle East released an appeal to intensify prayers, to implore the Lord Jesus Christ to restore peace to the land where he himself was born. At the same time, they call on the major powers and the international community to work for an end to the war in the Holy Land by implementing the international resolutions adopted by the United Nations, recognizing the people's right to self-determination. In addition, the Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, Cardinal Pier Battista Pizzaballa, on behalf of all the Catholic bishops of the Holy Land, invited all parishes and religious communities to a day of fasting and prayer for peace and reconciliation. We ask, Cardinal Pizzaballa wrote in the letter he signed as President of the Assembly of Catholic Bishops of the Holy Land, that on Tuesday, October 17, everyone observe a day of fasting, abstinence and prayer. There should be moments of prayer with Eucharistic adoration and recitation of the Rosary to the Blessed Virgin. Watch our program every Friday at 7.30pm. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Catholic News World Channel. God bless. Please subscribe to Catholic News World's YouTube channel. Thanks and God bless.